Hello again and welcome back to another day of daily Bible study. We're continuing on with the gospel according to Luke. We're picking up today with chapter 14, uh, starting in verse 7. Let's pray. Loving God, uh, you remind us that uh, the kingdom of God to come is not going to be a dry and dreary place. It's going to be a celebration. It's going to be a feast, a festival. Lord, it's going to be full of joy and enjoyment. Lord, help us to uh, always remember that. And Lord, help us to, uh, to model our lives here and now based on how things will someday be. Lord, we ask you to be with us during this time, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so yesterday we had a parable where Jesus talked, about, well, it's kind of a parable, where, or an object lesson of some kind where Jesus says that even if somebody is trying to follow the Sabbath, there are certain things they will still do on the Sabbath because it is about preservation of life and about bringing fullness of life. We're going to have now three, uh, for the rest of this week, we're going to have parables about meals and banquets. And the reason why is because Jesus is at a meal, at a banquet with this leader of the Pharisees. And that's the context. So it's one of those things when you have a bunch of people together and you're all having a meal together, you know, it lends itself to saying, well, let's talk about this aspect of things uh, because uh, it is, it is uh, what, what is at hand. You know, Jesus is taking what's at hand and using it to teach. So here's what we read, starting in verse 7. And he, Jesus, began speaking a parable to the invited guests when he noticed how they had been picking out the places of honor at the table, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this man, and then in disgrace you will proceed to occupy the last place. But when you are invited, go and recline at the last place. So that when the one who has invited you comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher, and then you will have honor in the sight of all who are at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exhausted or exalted. So I, I find that actually very interesting because uh, I had not been a Christian for a really long time when my family moved from upstate New York to, to Marshalltown in Iowa. And um, one of the things about uh, Marshalltown is that it had a high school orchestra. And I had played uh, violin uh, since fourth grade. And so they wanted to have a place for me to be. And I had gotten to be okay. I have not kept up with my violin. I, when I play, my hand gets tired very quickly because I have not exercised the muscles that need to be exercised uh, to do that. But what I decided to do is I came to a new place. I didn't know, you know what to expect. I didn't know how good or bad anybody else might be. And so I thought to myself, if I put myself in like you know, first violin and kind of first chair situation, uh, that's going to come off as a real jerk move. And so I thought to myself, I've heard this parable of Jesus where he says if you're invited to a, to a banquet, if you're invited to a feast, uh, put yourself in the last place. So I went and I sat at the back of the second violin section. And it was not a large, large orchestra. Uh, they did not have a large orchestra at the time. Um, and they may now, for all I know. But uh, in any case, I was playing, and uh, it was a relatively easy piece for me because I had, uh, you know, just from my background. And after we played for a little bit, the director stopped and pointed to me <laughs> and said, I want you to move up here. So I moved up to the first chair of the second violins, and then we played a little bit more, and then he paused and he said, I want you to come over here and play first chair. So, uh, and I got kind of, the, there was kind of that thrill of, there was a moment where at the time, now granted, I, I think that the orchestra program was suffering, you know, that, that there was, it was a relatively low bar uh, relative to what it might be at a different time in a different place. But there was, that, there was a certain feeling of exaltation where, you know, I didn't have to tell anybody that I played uh, well at all. Um, it was recognized by somebody else, and they said, you do not belong back there, you belong over here. And it was able to be the kind of thing where uh, things were recognized by somebody whose opinion mattered a lot more than mine. And that allowed me to be in a situation where I could be the most use, uh, to be the most helpful, uh, to be where, where I, people felt I needed to be without me having to put myself there. And that doesn't happen all that often, you know, in your situation where, um, so I will often try to put myself in situations where um, I'm being either behind the scenes or whatever. And then the idea being that if it's the kind of situation where um, my gifts and grace and talents or whatever are helpful, um, the, my hope is they will eventually be recognized as such and those who have to make decisions based on that will, will move me where they need me, put me where they want me. Um, and that I don't have to volunteer and say, I deserve to be here, I deserve to be there. 
Um, it's just a fascinating thing because what Jesus is saying is if we come in and we have a very particular view of ourselves and we have a very particular value of our, of our uh, skills, of our talents, you know, of what we are worth, uh, we could very easily put ourselves in a situation where we think of ourselves as a big deal. But the fact of the matter is you never know who else may be there. You never know who else might be showing up. Um, you know, if I were to, you know, I, I gave an example at one point of um, I was listening to somebody uh, uh, at a service and they were getting a lot of mileage out of a particular Greek word. And uh, what I realized was, um, you know, because I knew Greek fairly well at that time as well, and I started to discover that this person really uh, didn't, didn't know what they were talking about. And so there's always a caution to say, be careful with the original languages in preaching because you never know when there's someone in the congregation who knows more than you do. And uh, so there's a sense in which you don't know who all might be involved, and so you should let yourself be placed where you need to be based on the one who actually knows who they've invited and why they've invited them and what they invited them for. So, I mean, think about that. If, if you're, you know, if, at that point, why do we need to put ourselves in the lead? Why do we need to put ourselves in a high place? And I think there's a concern to say if we don't put ourselves out there at that level, then people may not recognize what we have, what we bring to the table, how important we may be. And I think what Jesus is telling us is to say, if people know what they're doing, if they know what they're talking about, if they know who they've invited and why, they're going to recognize uh, the gifts and talents that you have. And, that, and the thing is, it would be so much better to be moved up to a place of honor than to assume a place of honor and then be told, oh, no, 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 you're not supposed to be here. Um, so it's just, it's one of these things where I've seen it play out a couple times in my own life and I don't know if anybody else out there, uh, who might be watching this has ever had an experience like that themselves. Uh, but if you have, let me know about it because I think it's fascinating that if we, as, uh, as the people of God were to humble ourselves and put ourselves in last place and let God, um, and let the other people who God has put in place, uh, rearrange us so that we are where we need to be, we may find that we're actually lifted up higher than we thought we should. We may find that God's appraisal of our skills is actually different and maybe even better than our own. Uh, but we won't know unless we try, unless we put ourselves in a situation where we could be, uh, we put ourselves last so that God can make us first. Well, that's all for today. Come back in tomorrow. We'll continue on with another parable about uh, a meal. Have a good day.